we're gonna we're about to get started. I'll give it another couple seconds for people to join us and we'll get rolling with the meeting. Thank you all for being here tonight. All right, well, hello everyone. My name is Michelle Scott. I'm the manager of capital planning at the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. And tonight we'll be speaking about the draft MassDOT 2024 through 28 capital investment plan or CIP for short. Tonight's meeting is focused specifically on uh, Western Massachusetts. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Chris Clem to go over the meeting protocols. Thank you, Michelle. My name is Chris Clem, and I am one of the MassDOT producers this evening, alongside Raisa Kwame, who will help facilitate the question and comment session. I just want to take a quick minute to review your Zoom controls. On the bottom of your screen, you will find your audio settings. Your microphones are muted during the meeting, but you will have the opportunity to speak during the question and comment session at the end of the presentation by using the raised hand function to indicate that you'd like to ask a question, provide a comment. You can also rename yourself by clicking on the participant, participants button to open the participants list, finding your name, and then clicking rename. If you do have questions or comments during the presentation, you can put them in the chat box and we will address them during the question and comment session. If you need to attend the meeting by phone, please dial one, 301-715-8592 and enter meeting ID 822-9895-9482. Finally, you may view live closed captioning generated by Zoom by selecting the CC icon at the bottom of your screen. And if you are having any technical difficulties during the presentation, uh, you can request help through the chat box or you can call 413-781-6045, extension 321. <clears throat> this virtual public meeting will be recorded. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation may choose to retain and distribute the video, still images, audio, and or chat transcript. By continuing attendance with this virtual public meeting, you are consenting to participate in a recorded event. If you're not comfortable being recorded, please turn off your camera, keep your microphone muted, and refrain from chatting in the transcript box. If you prefer to excuse yourself from the meeting, you can find the materials at mass.gov forward slash CIP. Uh, other important notes, uh, you will note that you are automatically muted upon entering the meeting, and the meeting will be open to questions and answers uh, at the end of the formal presentation. And again, if you're having trouble with any technology, uh, please request Zoom support through the chat function or call the number at the bottom of your screen. All questions and comments are welcome and appreciated. However, we do request that you refrain from any disrespectful comments. And with that, I will hand the presentation back to Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So this slide gives a quick overview of the material that we'll be coming be covering tonight. Uh, first, we'll start in a couple minutes with some welcomes from the metropolitan planning organizations and transportation planning organizations that serve Western Massachusetts. Uh, these include um, the Berkshire MPO, which is staffed by the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and the Pioneer Valley MPO, which is staffed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, after that, I'll go into some detail about the 24 to 28 CIP approach and the strategic goals that inform this investment plan. Talk a little bit about the relationship between this document and the State Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, and the roles of MPOs and transportation planning organizations in that process. I'll talk a little bit about the funding sources that provide um, funding for the projects included in the CIP cover an overview of planned spending for fiscal years 24 through 28 and highlight some selected investments, particularly in Western Massachusetts. I'll share some information about how you can explore the draft CIP, including covering the document structure and our process for public engagement. And then finally, we really hope to hear from you all on um, your feedback on this draft plan and 
talk to you about the different ways you can provide that feedback. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to briefly to Andy McCall from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to give some words of welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, again, my name is Andrew McCall. I'm a senior transportation planner at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, we are the staff of the Pioneer Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is a group of locally elected officials that run the process we use for committing uh, federal transportation dollars to our local transportation improvement program, which the MPO uh, met today and endorsed. And now that document becomes part of the CIP because MassDOT um, provides the matching funds for those. So thank you for attending. Uh, we appreciate any uh, feedback on the CIP or our local TIP. And um, and we're always here to uh, answer any questions. Uh, and with that, I'll give it over to Beth at the Franklin uh, Regional Council of Governments. Hi, um, thank you, and thank you for um, for having us. Um, welcome to everyone who's come tonight. Um, I am the Transportation Program Manager at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. We we are the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization. We we are. Um, we are a rural region in Massachusetts, so we're a transportation planning organization, but we facilitate the um, the TIP process, the regional transportation planning process, and the um, 3C transportation planning process for Franklin County, um, the 26 towns in, in Franklin County in Western Massachusetts. Um, as Andy mentioned, we today we re released our regional draft regional transportation plan for a 21 day um, public review today at our TPO meeting. We also released our draft unified planning work program um, for public review and we endorsed our 24 fiscal year 24 to 28 uh, transportation improvement program. Um, so we are basically going through those same transportation planning pro processes that provide information and projects to MassDOT um from our local region that feed into the um into the their capital improvement plan so um thank you and if any questions come up later on that i can help you to answer i'd be happy to do that and i will turn it over to cleet cuss at the berkshire regional planning commission thank you thank you beth uh welcome everyone uh, appreciate your attendance at this evening's meeting um, the CIP is a very uh, important document that MassDOT prepares. Uh, part of it is built upon information that we develop through the Transportation Improvement Program, which um, really programs uh, a lot of the transportation projects that provide benefits to our residents. Uh, like all of the Western Mass communities, um, our roads are in relatively poor condition. Uh, the bridges are in uh, a state of disrepair. And uh, through the capital improvement process or capital investment process, uh, this provides the opportunity uh, to make these projects uh, become a reality and move forward to construction. Uh, within Berkshire County, um, there is also an interest in non-motorized transportation and projects that are included uh, in the CIP um, will also facilitate um, the development of trails and multi-use plans, as well as providing on-street facilities for bicycles. And last but not least, um, you know, transit buses uh, are, are of need, uh, newer buses are of need uh, within our region along with others. And um, this is once again, uh, another uh, means to get the funding programmed for these uh, purchases. So um, I believe that uh, this is an important document and we appreciate uh, your attendance in this meeting. And with this, I'll turn it over. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much, um, Andy, both for your hosting tonight and for your remarks and to Beth and Cleet for your remarks as well. So to give you a sense of um, what the CIP is, uh, the proposed 24 to 28 capital investment plan for MassDOT is one of really our key guiding documents that uh, directs spending to improve transportation in the Commonwealth. This is a budget and policy document that is fiscally constrained and programs state and federal dollars to pay for the Commonwealth's capital expenditures related to transportation. Um, it funds a variety of activities ranging from planning of projects to construction, as well as capital maintenance of the network that we have in place. Um, it's a rolling five-year plan and one that we conduct a development process for each year and update annually um, to move into the next year. So this plan covers a variety of modes, um, ranging from highways to bridges, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, um, investments in transit, such as facilities or vehicles, um, covers our aeronautics uh, system, rail, and the registry of motor vehicles. So all the, the components that support transportation in the Commonwealth. The diagram in the upper right-hand corner of this slide highlights the process and framework that we use to develop the CIP. And there are three key priorities that are cornerstones um, of this document. They include reliability, which is really focused on maintaining and improving the condition of our system, uh, modernizing the system to make it safer and to better accommodate growth and make it more accessible. And finally, expansion, which is meant to increase the transportation options and extend the network um, across the Commonwealth. These three priorities um, are supported by a series of investment programs that I'll go into in more detail. And those investment programs support and fund specific projects that advance these priority areas. There are several strategic goals that complement this framework in shaping the CIP. Um, the, and these shown here are the goals specifically for 24 to 28. They include safety, um, which involves improving safety for all users and adopting a systemic safe system approach to making these improvements. Uh, they include climate stewardship, uh, which promotes investments that um, support the commitment not only to decarbonizing our transportation system, reducing greenhouse gases, but also making our transportation system more resilient um, in the face of climate change. Our third goal is equity, and we look at this in two aspects, not only promoting investments that support uh, equitable access um, for people throughout the Commonwealth, but also considering equity in the way that we engage people in CIP development. And finally, responsible asset management, which looks at uh, prioritizing investments to support the preservation of the system and also help achieve um, MassDOT's performance goals and make sure that the system that we have can meet new needs and challenges. So I mentioned at the outset, uh, the connections between the CIP and the State Transportation Improvement Program or STIP, and this is something that Cleet alluded, alluded to in his remarks as well. So the nested diagram on the right-hand side of the slide kind of guides the, the, the process by which these documents interrelate. So the STIP is the federally required plan that MassDOT produces for highway and transit projects that are eligible to receive federal funding. And this is made up of the transportation improvement programs that our MPO and TPO partners also referred to uh, in their comments, um, which reflect um, federal funding directed to highway and transit projects in each of the regions within the Commonwealth. So this, the STIP is an aggregation of these 13 transportation improvement programs. And for you know, the upcoming years of 24 to 28, we're expecting that this amounts to about $10.8 billion in both federal funding and state matching funding for these projects. So the CIP includes uh, the content of the STIP, but also includes several elements beyond that. It includes other types of projects that may receive federal aid, and these may be um, airports that are receiving grants from the Federal Aviation Administration or rail lines that are receiving funding from uh, the Federal Railroad Administration. And then beyond that, it includes projects that are funded by other sources of funding that are available to the Commonwealth. 
And so again, the Metropolitan Planning Organizations or MPOs and the Transportation Planning Organizations or TPOs um, are really important components in the process of developing the CIP. And these organizations are um, decision and policy making bodies that serve different regions throughout the Commonwealth. They're a uh, type of organization that exists nationwide um, to serve regions, um, both urban areas or rural areas in the case of transportation planning organizations. And their uh, boards are comprised of local and state officials. And the transportation improvement programs they produce uh, include not only projects that they can select at their discretion with their allocation of federal funding, but also projects that are selected in those regions by MassDOT and the regional transit authorities that are operating there. Um, Again, uh, as folks alluded to, the transportation improvement programs that are being developed for federal fiscal years 24 through 28 are in, or either have been endorsed by these organizations or in their, their final stages of development. And these, of course, go on to inform the um, STIP and the CIP. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, so just to talk a little bit more about the funding sources that um, inform and fund the projects that are included in the CIP. This diagram highlights the four different source areas that um, fund the investments included in the CIP. Um, first, of course, is federal funding. Um, a portion of this funding, um, you know, the lion's share comes from federal formula funding um, that comes from the different administrations within USDOT. They include um, highway uh, reimbursements from the Federal Highway Administration for highway construction projects, um, federal transit funding, funding from the Federal Aviation Administration, and funding from the Federal Railroad Administration. Um, there are also uh, discretionary grant programs that are supported by USDOT, um, and these are uh, competitive processes that um, states and localities can apply to. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about those further on in the presentation. In addition to this federal funding, of course, there are state funding sources, um, state bond cap and general obligation bonds, as well as special obligation bonds that fund um, specific initiatives, such as our accelerated bridge program. Um, we also um, have projects that are supported by toll funding. These are uh, PAYGO funding sources that support improvements on our toll facilities, including those um, that are part of the metropolitan highway system, such as the Callahan Tunnel or the Tobin Bridge. And finally, in that fourth category, we have a variety of other sources that may contribute to supporting projects. Um, for example, uh, funding for the Central Artery Tunnel Project Repair and Maintenance Trust Fund or CARM Fund that supports um, ongoing support for the Central Artery Project. So I'll talk a little bit more about these funding sources and about recent developments that are shaping the CIP. Um, of course, a major influencing factor for upcoming CIP um, is the bipartisan infrastructure law, which was enacted in 2021 and provides um, transportation authorization funding for um, federal fiscal years 2022 through 26. Um, and the um, funding amounts in this bill uh, inform our expectations for 2027 and 28 as well. Um, so this informs the size of the formula funds uh, that comes to Massachusetts. Um, also in the BIL, there are a new set of federal formula programs that were not in previous bills. And of course the CIP um, is adapting to accommodate those. For example, um, the resiliency program that's included in the CIP for this year um, spends funding from the new federal promoting resilient operations for a transformative, efficient, and cost-saving transportation or PROTECT program, which is really focused on transportation resiliency. Um, MassDOT has developed a program for the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, which supports um, charging stations, particularly along in interstates, and that will inform future CIP spending. And the, MassDOT is also working with other offices in the Commonwealth to develop um, a carbon reduction strategy to direct funds from the new carbon reduction program to transportation planning projects. Um, other factors uh, and influences that the BIL has on the CIP include additional funding for bridge improvements, um, which you know, began and was incorporated in prior year CIPs and continues into the CIP for 24 to 28. 
um, also increased funding for transit programs, particularly those that serve seniors and people with disabilities. As I alluded to earlier, uh, there's also a discretionary grant component, uh, particularly one that was expanded by the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, the BIL authorizes approximately 110 billion in federal discretionary grant programs for transportation projects. Uh, should any of this funding be awarded to MassDOT, uh, the CIP will affect, reflect both the federal award and the state match. Um, and of course, we're also seeing another influence in terms of um, increases in our toll revenues as we're starting to see traffic rebound following uh, the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, resulting in expanded uh, tolling revenues available for the PAYGO projects to support those tolled facilities. So this slide highlights the overall spending included or planned spending, I should say, included in the draft 24 to 28 CIP. Uh, just some cues about the charts on this slide. The color coding reflects the priority area, you know, those three priority areas that I referenced at the beginning, reliability, modernization, and expansion. You can see reliability referenced in green, modernization referenced in blue, and expansion referenced in black. Um, in addition, you can also see some information about spending through the Chapter 90 program, which provides state aid to municipalities to support transportation improvement, as well as spending associated with the uh, shared services of MassDOT. So overall, you can see that the CIP includes approximately $15.4 billion in planned spending. This is a little more than $500 million more than what was reflected in the fiscal year 2023 to 27 CIP, which is in effect right now. If you take a look at that pie chart in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide, you can see that um, approximately 83% of overall spending in the CIP is directed towards um, either reliability or modernization improvements for our transportation system. Uh, one thing to note, MBTA spending, um, to some extent is reflected on the slide here. This is particularly representative of the uh, spending that the Commonwealth makes um, for MBTA initiatives, uh, such as the South Coast Rail Project. It is not a comprehensive picture of spending to support the MBTA. The MBTA does develop a separate capital investment plan that's approved by the MBTA Board of Directors. And you can visit the MBTA website to learn more about that specific plan but there is a certain amount that's accounted for in our CIP in 24 to 28, we expect that this will be about $838 million. So I alluded to earlier um, that in that three tier program structure below the priority areas is investment programs that are designed to support those priority areas. Uh, the slide here, shows um, for each of the MassDOT divisions in that far left-hand column, particular programs that support the priority areas of reliability, modernization, and expansion. Uh, for example, um, several programs support the reliability of um, projects supported by the highway division. You know, our new resiliency improvements program is included here as well as our interstate pavement program. Meanwhile, uh, for example, the modernization of the rail and transit Portions of our network are supported by a RTA fleet upgrades program and an RTA facility and system modernization program. That's just a handful of examples. I do want to highlight a series of municipal programs that support and are really focused on meeting the transportation needs of municipalities throughout the Commonwealth. Um, you may be familiar with our shared streets and spaces program. This program was initiated during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was really geared towards supporting communities as they expanded or repurposed sidewalks, curbs, streets, or parking areas to support public health, safer mobility, particularly for bicyclists and pedestrians, and renewed commerce for initiatives such as outdoor dining. Uh, other examples include the Municipal RTA and Electric Vehicle Fleets Program, which is geared towards supporting the integration of electric vehicles and related equipment such as chargers um, into communities uh, to support the Commonwealth's climate-related stewardship goals. Um, of course, Municipal Small Bridge Programs, it, that's funding available to cities and towns to improve bridges that are between 10 and 20 feet and that are either structurally deficient or load posted. And of course, the, the Chapter 90 programs for state aid to municipalities is referenced here as well. 
So on this slide, we have some highlights that are really specific to the projects in the Western part of the Commonwealth. Um, we have them organized by division here. The overall table includes information about the project's location, the general description of the investment spending that's planned for federal, for excuse me, fiscal year 24 in particular, and then fiscal years 24 through 28 overall, and finally the total cost of the project. Here's some examples here include taxiway improvements for the Pittsfield and Westfield Barnes airports. Um, work to repair bridges on the Connecticut River line and making track and way right of way improvements on the Berkshire line. You can see that for the regional transit authorities that operate in this part of the state, including Berkshire RTA, Franklin RTA, and the Pioneer Valley RTA, you know, improvements include uh, purchases of new vehicles, uh, passenger amenity improvements. Um, and um, things of that nature. One thing I will highlight is um, particularly for Pioneer Valley RTA, there's um, improvements to electric and hybrid buses and purchases of bus charging equipment. You know, an example of the kinds of investments that are supporting the Commonwealth's climate stewardship goals. Here is a second slide that's focused more specifically on the highway network um, and projects in, you know, throughout communities in Western Massachusetts. Um, there are a number of bridge improvement projects included here. Uh, for example, the improvements to the General Pierce Bridge in Greenfield and Montague. Um, there are also several roadway reconstruction projects. Um, for example, the Downtown Complete Streets Corridor and intersection improvements um, on Main Street in Northampton. Um, we've also tried to include a, a Diverse mix of modes when presenting these example lists. Um, we have rail trail uh, improvements included as well, such as the Greenway Rail Trail Construction Project in Southampton and the Westfield River Levy Multi Use Path Construction Project in Westfield. So now I'll talk briefly um, how you can explore more about the projects that are included in the CIP uh, and learn more about the variety of investments included there. So our CIP document is structured with three main components. Uh, the first is an overview of the CIP, um, which includes topics, many of which we've covered tonight, such as the structure and approach used to develop the CIP, the planned um, investments included in the sp associated spending, our development process, our sources of funding, some of the municipal programs I alluded to, a series of selected major investments and our public engagement approach. If you take a look at Appendix A, you can dig into these projects in more detail. Um, there's a full list of capital projects um, that are planned to receive support. These are organized by division and location um, and can find a, the types of information shown on those previous slides. And in Appendix B, you can take a look more specifically at the investment programs, uh, including the associated spending with each of them. Talk a little bit more about our public engagement activities. The document I just referenced is published two ways, as a PDF and also as a virtual story map. And that gives the opportunity to explore the CIP, particularly using interactive data visualizations that allow you to um, toggle through different options to explore the spending and really get a, your own flavor of, of the types of investments included in the CIP. We're also hosting uh, six virtual regional public meetings of which this is the first that we're um, holding in participation and partnership with um, our MPO planning organization partners. Um, each of these meetings will focus on the brief overview of the CIP I just gave, talk a little bit about some 24 to 28 investment highlights. Um, you know, we hope to hear from you later this meeting, a little bit more to talk about your feedback. Um, there are other ways, of course, about to provide public feedback that I'll cover in a minute, um, including our online comment tool. Uh, one thing I would like to note, uh, while the meetings do have a region specific flavor, particularly in terms of the projects, we will uh, be taking comment about any aspect of the CIP at any meeting. So if you know of folks who were interested in coming but could not make it tonight, we definitely um, hope to see them at some of our future CIP meetings and can take comments um, about any area they might be interested in at that point. So this slide includes uh, our upcoming public meetings 
in the blue box on the left-hand side. Um, we have six. Um, they'll be running on various days leading up to our final meeting on June 5th. All of these meetings are held starting at 6 p.m. Um, all will be virtual and registration details for all of them are included at mass.gov backslash CIP. There are other opportunities for public participation, including um, use of our CIP comment tool, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, you can also email us your comments at masscip at state.ma.us. Uh, we also um, accept uh, physical written forms of comment, um, letters if you choose to send those, and I'll share the address. Um, you can send them to at the close of the presentation. And we also encourage you to engage your municipal leaders and get involved in your local MPO or TPO process to really share information about your priorities for transportation projects. Um, so all these ways to provide comment, um, we hope you'll take advantage of them and our comment period for this document closes on June 9th. So just talking a little bit more about the comment tool. Um, this is a, a web-based interface uh, supported by Esri. It's a mapping tool that you can use to kind of explore different projects. Um, you can look for projects by MassDOT division, a particular MPO region. You can also search for them by name or project number if you happen to know it um, and enter or enter an address to really explore projects that way. So a lot of ways to, to filter for the areas you might be looking for. Um, the screen cap here shows an example of what the tool looks like. Um, in the center of the interface, you'll notice that there's a list of specific projects, which you can narrow down using the filters. If you click on the more info for one of those projects, it'll take you to an interface with more project details and a section where you can provide a written comment or upvote a project if you're interested in doing that. So we want to uh, give a clear impression of how we work from the with the feedback that we receive uh, through these different public engagement channels as it's a really crucial part to developing the CIP each year. So in terms of feedback that we may receive on projects, any feedback we get on existing projects, we share with project managers and the relevant division at MassDOT, uh, which can inform um, actions that are taken as the project is developed or implemented. Uh, if you happen to have comments on projects of interest that may not be programmed in the current CIP, we take those as well and share those with external stakeholders. Um, so they're aware of the level of interest that is in the project, which can go on to inform um, choices made for future CIPs. Um, programs and priorities, feedback we, see, we receive in this area helps us to support um, development of our next year of this rolling five-year capital plan and think about our approach to um, selecting investments and setting our priorities. And of course, it really helps us to have feedback on the broader CIP development process, um, the general public comments we receive on our communication strategy or the ways that people are involved really help us improve our process over time to make sure that this is a plan that really reflects the transportation priorities of people in the Commonwealth. So there is one other major public um, engagement opportunity and um, statewide initiative that I want to make you aware of as part of the presentation tonight. This is the Beyond Mobility Plan, which is MassDOT's next statewide long-range transportation plan. And this plan will have a strong influence on future CIPs. Uh, it will account for the major issues and needs and priority areas for transportation in Massachusetts between now and 2050. And it will also inform future capital planning, program sizing, um, and program outlays to improve transportation. So that's performance-based, equitable, and aligned with the needs of residents of Massachusetts. So this plan has been developed up to this point and will continue to involve um, extensive public engagement. And we hope you'll be involved in the plan as uh, work is being done to um, progress it towards approval, hopefully later this calendar year. If you're interested in learning more, you can visit mass.gov slash beyond hyphen mobility or scan the QR code to the right and you can learn more about public input opportunities that way. So at this point, I really want to thank you for your attention um, and learning about the CIP tonight. I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Chris Clem, who's going to take us through the, the question and comment period. 
Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> to ask the question verbally, please use the raise hand icon and we will give you access to unmute your microphone. Please state your name and try to share only one question at a time so everyone has the chance to participate. You may also submit written questions or comments via the chat box um, and we will read them out loud, but we would always prefer to uh, hear you share them verbally. Um, to ask a question on the phone, please dial star nine and we will call out the last four digits of your number and unmute your audio. Um, I do also want to take the opportunity, Michelle, please correct me if I'm speaking out of turn to offer um, any elected representatives or legislators um, the, the opportunity to comment as well. Um, I did see a message from Senator Joe Comerford. Um, yes, you can uh, make a statement rather than a question. Me, You have permission to unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Sorry if I upended the process. I, I want to thank MassDOT for this, you know, really important opportunity. Um, and the way that you're running this process is again, open, inclusive, transparent, clear, direct. Uh, these are wonderful, wonderful attributes um, and core to MassDOT. I also want to start by thanking you for the work that you've done through the last CIP including especially, and I know this will resonate, the work on the French King Bridge, which the last time I spoke at a CIP meeting was about that project, and now it's near to completion. And again, I, I wanna thank you on behalf of the, the, the people of the region and certainly the families who worried so much uh, for their loved one's safety with the bridge. Uh, and I'll submit written comments. Uh, detailing the communities I represent. So the Hampshire Franklin Worcester District is 25 cities and towns. Uh, and we are um, we are quite a number in the CIP. Uh, the communities that I represent have been grateful um, for their place in the CIP and I am grateful. And as you know, and I know MassDOT knows this very well, in a rural area like my district, the kind of road and bridge work MassDOT does really makes the difference for individuals and communities. Um, we don't have mass transit. Um, maybe we'll get there, but we don't have it right now. And so the work you're doing is really allowing the kind of economic development, the kind of just real human getting to work, getting to healthcare, getting to childcare um, uh, infrastructure that is so desperately needed out here. And our communities just don't have the money uh, to do it without you. So thank you. Again, I'll submit written testimonies. And, uh, and I just want to also say the planners and the municipal folks on this call have made us so much smarter, my team and I. And so we're so glad to be in partnership with them and you, MassDOT. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Senator, it was very, very thoughtful. Um, and Michelle, or if anyone else on the MPS, I would like to respond. Um, again, I, we all appreciate it. Just to add my thanks and, and looking forward to receiving your written comments as well, Senator. And I just wanted to um, say thank you for your comments about the um, the French King Bridge. We were just talking about it in the office at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments today and how wonderful it is that that project is, um, I think it's about half halfway done. I heard a report, they've got half of it finished. So um, it's something that was a big priority and we were really, um, really happy to see it being completed. Agree. It was a big win. Um, and thanks for everybody's role in it, for sure. And of course, I, I, my partnership on that was with Rep Representative Susanna Whips, who was just terrific, as everybody knows. Um, thank you so much. And you'll get the big long list because there's, you know, there's a lot of towns, so there's a lot of projects. Uh, uh, so thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. At this time, I, I don't see any raised hands, but I uh, want to encourage folks to participate. Uh, great, great opportunity to comment. Oh, I do see a raised hand. Apologies. Uh, no, that's all right. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to make a statement this evening. Uh, Lindsay Sapadosa, State Representative for the 1st Hampshire District. 
Um, and I wanted to start off this evening also by saying thank you. Um, last session, we were able to secure in a bond bill some really important funds for Northampton for the Main Street redesign. We'd been advocating for the release, and MassDOT had been very clear to try to that they to advocate to get this into the SIP, and we see that money there. So I'm very appreciative that that has been included. Um, I did not know about upvoting until tonight, so I'm certainly going to go and, and use that feature uh, after this to advocate for a few other projects. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I included a mention of the bridge in Cummington. The select board uh, would be very upset with me if I didn't mention what a priority it is for the community. And we know it's been on the SIP for, for a bit, I think. Um, we're glad to see it's still there and they are hoping that it can be moved up as soon as possible. Um, we understand the restrictions around uh, staffing and such, but it again is a priority for the community and um, it is really a critical improvement. Um, I no longer represent the community of Southampton, but I also just want to um, appreciate the fact that you have put in funding for the Greenway there. Um, it's something that we've been working on for uh, 20, I, the community has been working on for 20 years, I've been working on since I was elected. So I also want to uh, say thank you for that. Um, the uh, comments that I've had um, that I wanted to add this evening have to do with three other priorities, and I know I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record. Um, I, I'm really glad that there's money in the SIP or that there's a plan in the SIP to connect the Manhattan Trail in East Hampton to the Atwood, to Atwood Drive in Northampton, which again is where the courthouse is, uh, where, where the Family and Probate Court is, where medical facilities are. It's great because that will help people on bicycles. It still doesn't help, though, the people who are in wheelchairs or who are walking and who are coming from the housing authority, which is located just on the other side of that um, of the of the bridge, and are coming from the Northampton side to access. So it's a, it's a wonderful improvement to see this shared use trail, but it still doesn't um, address all of the needs. And so I'm hopeful um, that perhaps a shared use lane can extend along that entire road because there is an awful lot of foot traffic and it is just truly a very unsafe area to be traveling either by bicycle or on foot. Um, the other two things that I wanted to bring up, I know I've mentioned them uh, in previous years, we've seen the positive train control come on the SIP, get taken off the SIP. I know that there are good reasons for it, but of course I'd always prefer to see it there because it underlies the state's commitment to ensuring that that exists along the Connecticut River line. Um, I also wanted to just say, you know, I've already had calls today from individuals asking, where is East West Rail within the SIP? Where is East West Rail in general? I understand that that is a puzzle of projects. It is not one project, but I am going to say for the, uh, the sanity of all of us, it would be really helpful if it were highlighted in some way that these are the projects that are part of that. This is where the state's commitment is. Um, so whether it's within this document or in another document that MassDOT issues, uh, I think that it would be really helpful in talking this through with our constituents and the people who really care about expanding rail service in Western Massachusetts. So I will, um, as always, submit written comments, but I am grateful for the opportunity to participate in these hearings. Um, it feels like every May it, it makes my calendar and it, it is one of my favorite times to see what we're going to invest in. So thank you for the opportunity and for all of the hard work that's gone into this project. Thank you very much for your for your comments, Senator. Um, we really appreciate you, you sharing that feedback in person. And I know the to team of MassDOT looks forward to reviewing your written comments as well. I don't see any more written raised hands, excuse me. Um, I'll give folks a couple more minutes. Um, I do want to remind you that you can um, comment on the CIP online uh, if you're using mass.gov slash CIP. Um, a lot of the tools outlined by Michelle are very, very, very useful, um, as she noted earlier in the meeting. But I would definitely encourage your participation now with uh, the particular audience and the panelists here. And um, again, the last date to submit comments uh, on the draft CIP is June 9th. So you do have a couple of weeks to um, review this information and this presentation online or any related uh, CIP documentation that you'd like. 
and submit your comments in the next couple of weeks. I uh, don't see any comments coming in the chat or raised hands. Um, so if it's appropriate at this time, I think I will turn it back to Michelle to close out the meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your help tonight, Chris. Really appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Representative Sabadosa and um, Senator Comerford for your comments. Um, and, and thank you all uh, attendees for your participation tonight. Um, as Chris highlighted, uh, to learn more about the CIP and access the documents in the story map and PDF format, you can visit mass.gov backslash CIP. Um, this is on the developing the next capital investment plan button. If you um, move down to that on that particular web page, uh, you can send us comments again at masscip at state.ma.us, provide input via the comment tool. If you'd like to send us a letter, you can do so by writing to MassDOT, Office of Transportation Planning, attention the manager of capital planning at 10 Park Plaza, room 4150, Boston, MA 02116. Just wanna say thank you all again, and I hope you all have a great evening. Right. I think we can stop the recording. Yep.